Yo, what's happening guys? It's your boy Zach and you know what time it is. I am back with another workout video today. I worked on my arms this morning. I know and I've seen you guys seem to like these videos so I hope it's enjoyable. Uh, it is Monday, October 3rd, 2016. I'm just going to walk you through each exercise and talk to you a little bit about my mindset with each exercise. So first exercise, I started off with a barbell bicep curl, pretty much the king of bicep exercises. Reason being, you can handle the most load here. You should be able to lift the most weight out of all your bicep exercises with some sort of barbell curl. Uh, it also allows for a little bit of momentum, cheating, body English, whatever you want to call it. And ultimately, as long as you're not doing that, a majority of your reps using some momentum and cheating a little bit can will lead to increased muscle growth as long as you are being careful because if you do get hurt, if you do hurt yourself in some capacity, you're not going to be training. And if you're not training, you're not going to be making any gains. So make sure you're smart about it, but there is a time and a place to cheat a little bit. With the barbell bicep curl, basically the ways you can cheat is you, you lean forward slightly, then you lean back slightly. Your whole body leans forward when the barbell comes down and your whole body starts leaning back when you come up. Also, your elbow tends to move forward out in front of your body. So keep that in mind. Try to keep your reps as perfect as possible, but if they get a little bit of loose, uh, it's nothing to worry about. Just continue to make progress. Continue to pay attention to what you're feeling and if you actually feel the bicep working during your curls. That's what's most important. After that, I moved on to a easy bar preacher curl. Um, you can see here, just you're not going to be able to handle as much weight, but your bicep is more isolated, so it's more likely you're going to get a better bicep contraction here, uh, but you're not going to be able to use as much load. So there's always trade-offs with isolation movements uh, versus compound movements. In this case, it's more about the barbell bicep curl. You can handle a ton more load, and then the preacher curl just isolates the bicep a little bit more by getting your elbow out in front of your body and really forcing you to contract your bicep at the peak of the movement. After that, I moved on to a seated dumbbell curl. I opted to do both arms at the same time today. I find when I alternate one arm and then the other, uh, the arm that is down by my side is relaxing. And I don't notice as good, uh, I guess, I don't notice as big of a pump when I alternate versus when I do it at the same time. Plus, it's just a little bit more time efficient as well. My workouts are already long enough so if I can make them a little bit shorter, I do try to do that every now and again. After the seated curls, I moved on to a rope hammer curl. You guys have seen this before. It's one of my favorite movements for biceps, and it's actually my favorite. Uh, the cable with the rope is my favorite way to work the hammer grip curl. So if you guys haven't done that already, give it a shot. Make sure you drive your elbow back towards your side as you curl the weight up. After that, I moved on to a facing away cable curl. This really hits the long head of your bicep, so it puts your bicep in a huge stretch position. It's very hard to overcome the initial part of the movement, and that's why a lot of people leave their elbow bent when they do curls. They tend to leave their elbow bent, and they just keep going to the top. This is where you have more mechanical advantage because the, the, um, the joint angle is more closed off. You're going to be weakest down at the bottom where the... Uh, the joint is the longest, so the lever arm is the longest. So try to really elongate your elbow and then curl the weight up if you want to maximize that exercise. After the cable curl, I moved on to a dumbbell standing hammer curl. I did both arms at the same time. Just like I said, this is to be more time efficient and also it gives me a better pump than I would get alternating the arms. Now, I do have to use a little less weight, but that's fine by me. I'm looking to just fill the muscles with as much blood as possible. And uh, this is definitely one of my favorites. Plus, it's just really, really, really good for your grip. I have a weak grip, so it's something I need to continue to work on. And the hammer curls definitely force me to have to, to grip the handles firmly. After that, I moved on to two forearm exercises. First, just a forearm extensor curl. So reverse wrist curl. And then I went to a traditional wrist curl. Uh, doing these two exercises, you know, you think about it, it's like, oh, well, 
you're just doing forearms, forearms get hit all the time with everything else when you're gripping and pulling, and that's true, but I've really noticed a big difference in my elbow pain when I do both of those exercises on arm day. And they're just one of those muscle groups that are lagging on most people because you don't give them a lot of attention. Much like calves, they get placed at the end of a workout or they're just skipped all together based on how tired you are at the end of your workout. So that concluded the bicep portion of the workout. After that, I moved on to triceps and I started with a tricep push down. I like to do this because it warms up my elbows and I do get a really, really nice pump doing tricep push downs. I can really just continuously pump it out. I tend to get a better pump there than I do with some of these extension movements. So like right here, this would be a dumbbell incline skull crusher. And you can see I'm scooted up on the bench a little bit, so my head is actually off the bench, which clears room for my shoulders and my elbows to roll back, because I do let my elbows roll back, and that's because I want to keep tension off of my elbows. I get some snapping pain through my elbows occasionally, and also, um, like I said before, I've had elbow tendonitis issues, and I'm definitely trying to avoid that. And you can see with this movement too, I rotate my wrist right at the top and I stole that from Steve Weatherford and it's actually been really, really useful for me to feel my tricep all the way at the lockout position by turning my wrist just 45 degrees from neutral. Ah uh, yes, and then after that I went ahead and decided to do a easy bar overhead French press. You guys have seen me do this quite a bit. For those who want bigger triceps, make sure you hit some sort of overhead extension movement. You can use a easy bar like I'm doing here. You can use a dumbbell. You could even use a cable apparatus, which I've shown in a couple of my videos. Anything to get the job done. Really, really important. I advise you to go light and get a deep stretch. If you don't get shoulder pain during this exercise, you can get deep. If you have shoulder pain because this position isn't good for your shoulder, then you're gonna have to avoid this exercise. But if you can do it without shoulder pain, getting here and actually trying to almost touch the bar all the way to the nape of your neck will give you a massive stretch and you will be so sore the next day. Not even kidding, super sore. Uh, after that, I went over to the Smith machine and now I go to this gym, I have three gyms I go to and I just kind of alternate based on what day it is and how I'm feeling, which one I want to go to. Well, two of the three gyms have a Smith machine and I decided today I'm going to do close grip bench on the Smith machine and I really, really liked it. So I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, I did three sets of 10 with a 45 and a 25 and then that was a set of 15 as a back off set. And then finally I finished up the workout. I actually didn't even mean to do this exercise, but I decided to finish up with some overhead, just cable skull crushers whatever you want to call them, just another angle to hit my triceps and then I was out after that. Uh, whew, that was a lot to say in eight minutes. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it, guys. So until next time, I am out. Take care.